Hola amigos, hola amigas, welcome, bienvenido, croisery salam, welcome to the channel y'all, chash jack shimash. Today I have, I'm sorry to say, for the ones who don't like it, <laughs> I have another cooking video <laughs> with a new gadget. This is the Instant Pot, so it's basically an electric pressure cooker. This one is five to seven liters, serves up to six people. And today we're gonna to be doing a beef bourguignon in it. So I'm going to open the box. I don't know who this came from. So whoever you are, I'd like to say a great, big, huge, massive thank you for getting me this off my Amazon wish list. Uh, I'm really, really chuffed. So that is basically it to unbox it. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't come with a uh, recipe book, but you can get um, recipes online, so don't worry. Oh, hang on, we're flickering, we're flickering. Hang on. Okay, we're not flickering. So I've been watching lots of videos on the Insta Pop, or the Instant Pop, as I should call it. Uh, on how to use it and I've downloaded a couple of recipes as well uh, and I've got some saved uh, that I'm gonna do on it so this is a wonderful seven in one machine you can do so much with it let me just take out that very simple to use as well which is really cool so twist it to open it it has a stand, so you can stand the lid on it that side or that side. Fantastic. Inside we have this little rack that you can use if you're doing steam puddings or steam vegetables, so you can get them in and out easy. So that's really good. Also as well, jacket potatoes. Um, you can put the potatoes on that. This is the Beautiful stainless steel pot that you do all your cooking in. And inside is the pressure switch. Inside there, you can see, so it knows to go on and off. Uh, you can clean all of this, in the, you can clean this in the dishwasher. I'm not sure about the lid, I will have to read the instructions, but I think you can, uh, if you take this seal off, this seal, comes off very easy for you to clean it. Make sure that you put the seal back in properly. Uh, there's a caution sticker there, so we'll take this off, or does it stay on? It doesn't seem to come off very easy, but I am gonna take it off. There we go, can stand stickers and stuff. Does my head in. Here we have the power cord. I would say that is roughly about a meter, so it's not too bad. I've seen machines with shorter and longer. This is a steam collector at the back, because if you do put your lid on there and you do get drips, they will just run down and run into this little container here so that you can wash it. So that's a really good idea to keep your stove tops or worktops nice and clean. So that just fits on there. Power plug just plugs into the back there like a kettle. Turn it around. Plug it in. There we go. So that comes on immediately. Uh, I think there might be, yes, there's a protective sticker off that so that we've removed all the stickers. Very, very easy. And here we have the manual that you should read through it. First thing I'm gonna do is clean this. I'm gonna wash it. Okay, so I've cleaned the pot, so that is now nice and clean to go back in. 
and that just fits in nicely. The lid then just goes. Oh, hang on. There we go. It makes a noise. So when you open it up. Okay, so if you take off the lid, it makes a noise. When you close the lid, that will uh, tell you that it is engaged. At the very top of the machine here, the back, this is the pressure. So you have venting and uh, cooking. So that's for venting. And when it's in that, back direction that is for cooking. So you have to make sure that you have this turned the right way. Then at the front of the machine, you have all the functions. <coughs> Excuse me. We have soup, meat, bean chili, poultry, slow cook, saute, pressure level, keep warm, cancel, delay start, rice, multigrain, porridge, steam, yogurt, and pressure cook. What will you, these are all like the preset buttons. When I'm cooking, for example, when I'm gonna be doing this beef bourguignon, I need to take the lid off, set it to saute. Um, it's gonna have a timer on it, so. Take that off, less time, normal, more time. So that's like kind of like the max it's got on there. Keep warm, delay start, pressure level. Da, 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 da. So um, let's get on. Okay, so it is now on. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in the pan. Put some oil in. So I have some bacon or lardons diced and smoked so i'm going to cook them up first okay so that is heating up nicely so while that's heating up i am going to prepare the actual meat so because uh, we're going to be pressure cooking it i've decided just to go for a roasting joint because it's going to be cooked in the pressure cooker anyway to make it nice and soft so i'm not worried about um it being tough. Okay, the Instapot has come to temperature because on the front of it, it says hot. So I'm now gonna pop in my lardons and brown them off. So while that is browning off, I'm going to slice up my meat into big chunky cubes. So just keep stirring and cooking the bacon lard on until they are slightly browned. Don't worry about any sticky bits at the bottom as long as you don't burn it, keep turning it. We will deglaze that once we've finished browning and prepping the stuff. wait for them to have a little bit more color on them. Okay, so the bacon is now browned off nicely. I'm gonna put it into a bowl out of the way. I'm gonna put that back on and I'm gonna start browning my meat in batches. This may seem an unnecessary step but I honestly can't recommend enough that you do this because it genuinely does make a difference. I mean, I'm not Julia Child, but this really does work. You just want to brown it off roughly on all sides. Don't overfill the pot, otherwise you're going to end up with 
soup when you're browning. I mean, you could do this on a separate pan on the hob, but I'm doing everything in the Instapot for you guys to see, just in case you don't have a cooker. Okay, so I have sauteed my onions a bit and I've been scraping at the bottom because that is where all the flavour is. So they are now done. I'm going to take them out. So I'm going to have to use a glove because this pot is going to be very hot and I'm going to empty my onions in back into a bowl. What we're going to be doing now is called glazing. So I have a small bottle of red wine, which I'm going to pour in. My wooden spatula. And I'm going to deglaze the pan, which basically means cleaning up all those black bits at the bottom that are stuck on there for that lovely flavor. So I'm going to let that boil because I want to boil off all the alcohol so it's just the flavor of the red wine okay so I'm just gonna let that boil away for a minute Right, okay, so that has now bubbled away and reduced down a little bit and the bottom of the pan is now nice and clean. You want to turn it off. Off, where's off? There we go, off, cancel, off. Now, what I want to do is start layering the bourguignon. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a layer of meat. sprinkle of the bacon I'm gonna add a smattering of the onions I'm gonna add some of the mushrooms some people put these in at last I like to put them in during and I'm gonna put in some carrots and again I'm going to put another layer of meat now there is a max fill line on here so if you just move your pot around so you can find out where the max is yeah I'm 
put some more of the bacon lardons. Squish them in. Some more onions. Mushrooms. Carrots. Squish in the rest of the meat. Lovely juice and everything that's in that pot. Don't want to waste anything of it. And I'm going to pop in the rest of the onions. Squish it all down. Add a few more of the mushrooms. And then we are at the max. So I have pre-prepared the um, wet mixture, as you would call it. So that is, uh, let's have a look, what did I put in there? I put in um, garlic, bay leaves, tomato paste, dried thyme, and some other bits and bobs. And you just want to make sure that the pot the liquid all in, covered, like so. If you want to add in more liquid after, actually I think I'm going to put, no that's fine, I'm not going to put any more, that's absolutely fine. And I've got some bay leaves here, so I'm going to pop in some bay leaves on the top. Because you want to remove them. Big one. There we go, bay leaves. Before you put the lid back on, you want to make sure that you have this clean so it makes a perfect seal. So I just take a little bit of kitchen paper here and just make sure that there's no dribbles everywhere hardly any mess that is the beauty with this next we want to put the lid on and the valve at the back you want it not on venting you want it on cook so it just goes back there and on the front of the display I want to do Pressure level, hang on. So I wanna press pressure cook, pressure level, high pressure, and time, no, hang on a second, time, how do I do more time, oh yeah. And I want to do it for one hour. There we go, one hour, wait. It's now on. It's now going to start building up pressure. So that is in the back position. The lid's on. The little pop there will pop up when it's um, at pressure. So I'm going to wait. As soon as that comes up onto pressure, I will let you know. Okay, so it started its countdown. The little pressure dot there where's it going with my finger there we go there is up so it's at pressure the lid gets absolutely hot do not touch the lid as it says do not touch the sides are definitely cooler and we've got 45 minutes to go so i'll be back in 45 minutes the time is done 
So now we're going to flick it to vent. So I'm going to put the fan on, it's a bit loud. Okay, so that is now dropped down, so we are ready to open. Let's have a look. And then the beauty about this is you're able to put that there. And as you can see, it is bubbling away. So I'm gonna give it a good stir with this lovely big um, spoon because I want to see, uh, I need to take the bay leaves out first, so there's one. And there's more somewhere. Oh, well, we're picking out bay leaves for, bay leaves for tea. So let's give it a good stir. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little plate. Little plate. See what plate. And I'm just gonna take out a piece of this roast beef. There we go, so just look at that. Oh, wow. yeah. uh, let's have a little taste. Not be very hot. Oh. Very hot. <laughs> very hot. Um, um, um. So what I want to do now is, I'm going to add some cornstarch into it to thicken it. So I'm going to put it on saute keep it hot and I'm going to prep the corn flour. Okay so I put in the corn flour and I put it back on for 10 minutes to cook that out so now I'm going to release the pressure again. Okay so the little nubbin has dropped down we are safe to open and there we go so that has cooked through all the um, corn and it has mm, thickened it up slightly, but it's still like um, beef stew. <laughs> so it's beef bourguignon you know, beef stew. Anyway, so let me serve up some mashed potato that I have pre-prepared. And I have my slotted spoon. And there we go, absolutely delicious. Bit uh, wet, but still delicious. Beef bourguignon. Now, when it comes to cleaning, the rack will go into the dishwasher. The lid can go into the dishwasher. The instructions inside on how to take it apart. So you take the seal out and the other bits. All, it, all of it is in the instructions. This part of the pot can go into the dishwasher as well. Obviously not the main body. You have to wash that by hand. Um, and the cord and everything you just wipe over. So there we go. So whoever got me this, I would like to say thank you so, so much. And I will see you guys in the next delicious episode.